When I saw Jesus and gave it all. My name is Scott Boyer and this is God in HD, all about seeing God and the Bibles through movies and pop culture. And today I'm talking about the movie Inception. The premise of the movie Inception is ultimately uh, you got a group of people that are trying to go and implant ideas and thoughts into a man's mind, into his subconscious, uh, through his dreams. And the ultimate reason, reasoning for this is they're thieves and they're trying to get embezzle money and do all these things, but they're trying to get into this man's head. They're trying to get into his heart, into his mind, into, and, and basically implant thoughts that aren't his original thoughts. And then once he comes out of his dream, he's going to go ahead and follow through with something that's going to benefit this group of people. You know, as I'm watching this movie, I couldn't help but think about a, a really cool biblical truth that's tucked away in this movie. And that is that, you know, we all deal with, with, uh, with thoughts and, and our mind gets to run in and pretty soon we are living in fear. You know, wh what am I going to eat? Uh, how am I going to pay my bills? What do, will I have a job in a few months? Am I going to get sick and die from some virus? And, and this thing just keeps going on and on and on. Thoughts of fear, thoughts of discouragement, thoughts of depression, and these things just get in there. Um, what I want to tell you today is those aren't your thoughts. They did not originate with you. They were planted there by the enemy. They were planted there from some other source, but they are not from you and they are not from God. Just like they planted those thoughts and those ideas into this man's subconscious, the enemy is able to plant thoughts and the enemy is able to come in there and try to you know, discourage you and, and get you to act on things which produce fear in your life. You know, the Bible says something really interesting about this subject. First of all, it recognizes that we are in a war and it, it talks about how we're not completely left helpless but we actually have spiritual weapons that can combat these things. And it says that we have the ability to cast down images and imaginations and thoughts that exalt themselves against the knowledge of God. And we have the ability to bring into captivity every thought to the obedience of Christ. Did you know that God is thinking about you and his thoughts toward you are not bad or not evil or not about what are you going to do or, or I'm going to get you, but his thoughts are actually good I mean the fact that he's thinking about you and me right now when many times I'm not thinking about him man I say like David says in Psalm chapter 139 such knowledge is too wonderful for me for it is high and I cannot attain it it says how precious also are your thoughts unto me O God how great is the sum of them if I should count them they are more in number than the sand that's good news over in Jeremiah, it says, For I know the thoughts that I think towards you, says the Lord, thoughts of peace and not of evil, to give you an expected end. Man, that is good news. God's thoughts towards you are thoughts of peace and not of evil. And He can implant things into you and into your subconscious that are good. How, how can He do that? Well, if you let Him, if you open up and you get this word in your heart and in your mind, then you're going to start, it's going to start producing victory in your life, the very opposite of what fear produces. And you're going to see in your life as you have your subconscious filled with, with thoughts of peace and precious thoughts from God that instead of saying, you know, I'm not going to make it and uh, I, I, what am I going to eat and it, do, will I have a job? You'll be thinking, my God supplies all of my needs. My God will take care of me. My God always comes through. Instead of worrying about what's going to happen, you're going to be thinking about how I'm triumphant in every situation and I'm more than an overcomer and I'm more than a conqueror and God loves me. And that's what I pray that you do. I pray that you get a hold of this word and start planting his seeds, the seed of his word into, into you and into your heart and in your mind and let it produce powerful, beautiful, victorious living rather than letting the enemy produce thoughts of evil and thoughts of discouragement and thoughts of fear and thoughts of suicide and acting out on those things. I'm telling you, if we fill our lives and our hearts and our minds with the word, you're going to see the fruit. Amen. Prosper.